Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it's just wonderful to see so many of you here today. Welcome to the CBI Annual Conference. Um, a huge thanks, first of all, to our headline sponsors, Harvey Nash and Ernst & Young, who, frankly, uh, without them, we couldn't do this. And our supporting sponsors, equally important, Barclays, Jones Lang LaSalle, and, of course, BA Systems. I'm sure you've all seen in the hall today some of the magnificent products that they actually make for this country. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, as always, just make sure that the mobile phones are switched off. It always helps. And um, there is no scheduled fire alarm today. So if one goes off, we have a problem. And um, there are people that are around the the sort of auditorium who can guide you through to the exit. We have assembled, I think, the most remarkable list of speakers for you. The Prime Minister, um, the Leader of the Opposition, the Mayor of London, the Business Secretary, plus a host of top business leaders. All on the same day, all in the same room, but probably for the sake of good order, not all at the same time. It promises to be a, uh, a fascinating day, and I think we'll end with an equally engaging and enjoyable dinner when our guest speaker will be Andrew Ma. So hopefully, a number of you are staying for that. It's just about a year since I stood here and spoke of the challenges we needed to overcome in this country and the national sense of entitlement we needed to cure if we were all to, to succeed in what is clearly an increasingly competitive world. And I think we've come a long way in 12 months. The improved taxation levels we campaigned for, more in hope than anticipation, both corporate and personal, now in place. The Olympic success that we worked for in construction, in presentation, and performance, now firmly on the scoreboard. With the echo of great British achievements, both on and off the track, still echoing around the world, and what a magnificent August that was. We've got reduced inflation, and we've got stable unemployment, both now a reality, and I think most importantly, the first signs of growth that, quite frankly, we prayed for. And it's just starting to inch through. So I think going around the country, it's no surprise that when I talk to members, the mood is, it's tough, it's been challenging, but it certainly could be a lot worse. On the international front in the last year, we've seen many changes. We've seen a mix of established and new faces, in, in fact, wrestling with many of the old problems. In the West Wing, the return of the old team, overseeing, I think, what is a stuttering recovery and politically, a wall of resistance in the House of Representatives. In Beijing, a new team, nurturing continued, albeit slightly slower, growth in China. And in Europe, a partially refreshed team trying to sort out the same old problems to avoid what would clearly be an international catastrophe. So for the UK, halfway through the cycle with the existing team, I think self-help looks like the best way forward. When we look at home, we benefited from an opposition that's growing in stature, knowing that a strong opponent always makes for a better government. We've had a government to be fair, sometimes stumbling in presentation, but I am pleased to say 
never wavering in determination, keeping a firm grip on the finances of the country, low interest rates, and of course, favorable exchange rates being the prize that has continued to underpin our steady recovery. The CBI's message to the Chancellor has been equally resolute. Keep prescribing the medicine, but resist increasing the dosage. The patient is fragile. Accept a longer convalescence. It is in itself infinitely preferable to the risk of a sudden relapse from a heavy overdose. So however well-intentioned, the doctor must be patient. For modest recovery is evident. Statistics are improving. And exports to countries outside the EU now account for more than 55% of our trade. This hasn't been the case since the 70s. And the value of goods exported to China was 24% higher in August than in the same period last year. That's no small achievement. And for the first time in 40 years, which is sadly within my own living memory, we are a net exporter of cars. Quite unbelievable if you turn the clock back only 20 years. Shareholders have started to rediscover their role as stewards with a little encouragement. And businessmen, whilst remaining performance-driven, are encouraged to be more values-led. And very pleasingly, more women are actually now joining boards. So, when we glance in the rearview mirror, it gives us a little feeling of comfort that some progress has been made in difficult times. Some difficult terrain covered, but a look through the windscreen continues to show that it's a difficult course ahead with some pretty nasty potholes on what is still a bumpy ride. Confidence remains in short supply. Whatever the domestic achievements, the risk of a seismic shift in economic conditions from what is still an unstable European continent continues to rein back any sort of feeling of real optimism and big investment enthusiasm in many of our boardrooms. And no change in the short term, to be fair, looks likely. But I have to say, when most around us in our neighborhood are slipping backwards, forward momentum, however small, is still welcome progress. And it's on these modest foundations that we must now jointly commit, that's politicians and business leaders, to accelerating the pace of our sustainable growth program. So as we look forward, I want to examine four key messages that will be the central thrust of the CBI agenda in 2013, and indeed, our conference today. First, we must all, business and government, redouble our focus on export performance with renewed vigor. And importantly, we must get after those opportunities that are still outside our traditional comfort zone. Not just China and India, but Turkey, <coughs> Indonesia, Russia, and of course, South America. This is a race that continues. There is no winning post. There are only marker posts. And at each stage, we must see that where success achieved is simply a spur to take us on to even greater effort in cost reduction, in product innovation, and indeed, clearly, in new market penetration. I saw some pretty remarkables of this a couple of weeks ago, meeting with CBI members in Hong Kong, in Beijing, and Shanghai. It was very, very enlivening. All the people were fired 
with enthusiasm. All were delighted with their success and all were excited about the prospects for future growth. Not only household names like Tesco, Jaguar Land Rover, Intercontinental Hotels, GKN, Diageo, but also smaller companies, service providers and manufacturers, respected for their expertise and valued internationally for their skills. And they're doing well. All who had summed up the courage to go, all who had shown the tenacity to stay, and all enjoying rates of growth that we in the West can only dream of. Ambassadors, consular officials, UKTI, all there in force, supporting, encouraging, smoothing, and I have to say schmoozing, working with the business community and the CBI in the field to make it happen. A real demonstration of where a shift in government focus in the Foreign Office has actually created a change in the behaviour of its people. While China itself may regard 7%, 6 to 7% growth as a little disappointing, in perspective, we all have to remember that it is still equivalent to one Greek economy every three months and one Finnish economy which is actually more difficult to visualize, but one Finnish economy every 12 months. I mean, it's major. So message number one is, is almost a reprise of last year, but it remains vital. There's a world of opportunity out there, and we all must get our share if we are to return to prosperity at home. The second point, I think whilst looking for new partners, we mustn't forget old friends. Europe, however challenged, remains home for half our exports. And it's like many relationships. Can't live with you, can't live without you. But somehow, the partnership continues to survive. And whatever the popular appeal may be of withdrawal, businessmen and politicians must keep a bridge to Europe firmly in place. As the countries of Europe bind together in pursuit of salvation, we in the UK must work harder to avoid the real risks of isolation. Europe is the bedrock of our international trade. It should be viewed as the launch pad from which our global trade can expand, not a landmass from which we wish to retreat. And if we are to avoid an exit vote in any referendum, it is essential that the voice of British business is loud and clear in extolling the virtues of future engagement, not as a reluctant participant, but as the linchpin of our wider global ambitions. My second message, therefore, is Politicians must engage, corners must be fought, and battles must be won for this country. But the cold business logic of a European partnership, out of self-interest, must be argued for and ultimately must prevail. My third point is aimed pretty firmly and squarely at government. Our success in the world will undoubtedly be driven by the strength of an identified industrial strategy at home. A strategy that doesn't pick winners, but supports sectors. An economy that welcomes all comers, but still manages to look after our own. Now this year, I think we've seen encouraging progress in the evolution of a real plan through the work of the business secretary, who clearly we're going to hear from a little later, and the report of Michael Heseltine. So these are good things, which very much align with the CBI's thinking about the need for a real plan for this economy. But our criticism of government has never been one of mindset, 
it hasn't been one of lack of initiatives or policy direction for pro-business. It's been about delivery. Business, frankly, doesn't need a lot more new initiatives. It requires existing plans and published words to be converted into good deeds in infrastructure, local enterprise partnerships, energy, outsourcing. There are a list. Business wants consistency, not policy made on the hoof. It wants clarity, not interdepartmental interpretations of policy. It wants certainty through policy and hopefully some cross-party agreement at the highest levels. And most of all, it wants delivery, efficient execution of promises made to quickly become promises kept. Only then will confidence return for investors to make long-term commitments in an uncertain world. So my third message to government is in the words of the great Nike slogan, just do it. Now, undoubtedly, an area of government that has met much of this challenge is the area of education, where for some the scale of change and the pace of doing it has almost been maybe sometimes a little too hectic. The CBI message is clear and will be even clearer during this afternoon's debate. We want academic achievement, but we want it blended with social skills. We want our students to be grounded and rounded, fit for purpose in a competitive world. We want British students to be the best, equipped with the skills today, not only academic, but be able to work in a business environment to have those skills so they can prosper tomorrow. And frankly, nothing could be more important. The young unemployed are becoming a social fault line across Europe. It is wrong and it is dangerous. To be without prospects is to be without purpose. And to be without purpose is to be alienated from society. And without education, there is no hope for recovery of the next generation and the generation that follows. And lastly, my final message, there is no doubt if we wish to educate our children to be fit for purpose, we must give them inspiration and a place that they believe is fit to work. We must demonstrate that we are a generation that is focused not just on how much money we make, but how we make money. We must collectively work to salvaging the reputation of business. As businesses and individuals, standards have been variable, greed occasionally prevalent, and fairness forgotten in a number of sectors, banking and media at the forefront. But others from all walks of life sometimes also showing signs of bad behavior. It's given commentators a license to tar all with the same brush and to poison the minds of many as to the values and value of business in society. Nobody should expect forgiveness from those that have lost their homes, their jobs, their reputations, their privacy, or their prospects by the misdeeds of the powerful and contemptible, but I'm pleased to say few. But lessons have been learned. Banking boards and practices have been refreshed. Media moguls chastised and executive greed contained by a mixture of regulation, legislation, stewardship, and boardroom self-discipline. Now, the direction of travel is positive. There still remains, of course, more to do. But we must encourage those 
that see from the outside a view of business as something that is not good for society. We must see that they stop saying all leaders don't care when they do. All energy companies rip you off when they don't. All bankers are despicable when they are not. Or big business is bad business when it isn't. Those making things better should be supported. Those creating wealth should be rewarded. And business, big, medium, and small, when doing good business, should be respected. And only then will society and business be at one. Good governance and great performance must go hand in hand. Those businesses that strive for it, those commentating on it, should celebrate it. And for all of us, we should recognize at the end of the day, when it works, we all benefit from it. During the course of the day, I think these themes are going to reoccur and they're going to be developed in some of the panels and speeches that follow mine. The panels, we have an excellent grouping that I think will add real interest to the topics. And we have a speaker list second to none. During the course of the year, the CBI team are going to be working for you, the members, to turn our collective ambition in these areas into solid achievement. John and the team are utterly committed to doing just that. So thank you all this morning for coming. Thank you for listening. I wish you all an engaging, rewarding, and most of all, an enjoyable conference. Thank you. <laughs>